Homosexuality has been around as long as mankind has graced its earth with its presence. It has long been considered taboo by many and was once even punishable by death. We have come quite a long way in learning to accept it and since then have made many reforms and laws protecting both those who embody it and those who support it. Homosexuality is not a choice made later in life. It is a preference one is born with. But not everyone agrees with that statement. Society is always shown to be vile, disgusting, and downright shameful. It has only been in recent years that the U.S. began to alter this image of gayness to a more humorous context. The media would portray homosexuals as comic relief, usually in ridiculous and absurd situations in which they would use their flamboyancy and quick wit to get themselves out of a bind. However, there was a severe backlash against this image from the gay culture. The media at first chose to ignore this, but eventually could not once gay pride became mainstream. They still, however, stereotype gays on TV as the vaudeville type. With the formation of groups such as Gay Liberation Front and LGBT or lesbians, gays, bisexuals, and transgender, the gay culture had its own weaponry against its image being representative of them, and to this day, they still fight that stereotype. This is, uh, this is, this is so hard, but I, 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 I think I've realized that I am, I can't even say the word. Why can't I say the word? I mean, why can't I just say... I mean, what is wrong? Why, why do I have to be so ashamed? I mean, why can't I just say the truth? I mean, be who I am. I'm 35 years old. I'm so afraid to tell people. I mean, I just... Susan, I'm gay. <laughs> The rise in gay characters on television was back to 1997 when Ellen DeGeneres' character, Ellen Morgan, revealed herself as a lesbian on the television sitcom Ellen. Soon after, Ellen DeGeneres announced to the public that she herself was a lesbian. Ellen was canceled within the next year, but the impact of that one episode proved revolutionary for the gay community. The continued increase in gay characters on television today can be attributed to greater social trends in recent society. The first trend is the presence of gay and lesbian civil rights activity in the news. Gays are no longer remaining quiet about their existence and oppression, and their efforts to gain equality are being spread through the media. This new visibility in the news has formed a second social trend, the increasing awareness of the gay market. Since gays have gained recognition in the news, they have gained recognition as a consumer market. This results in the need for additional gay representation in television programs and advertisements in order to attract a larger audience and a greater number of consumers. What exactly are the representations of gay people on TV? Think of a gay person on a TV show that you watch frequently. Who's the first person that comes to mind? Most people will pick a character that is usually flamboyant and effeminate or someone real butch. Why so? Well, these characters are the most distinctive. There are three types of homosexuals we see portrayed in the media. The first are the butch. These are your typical motorcycle driving, leather jacket wearing badass. Usually placed in a very macho setting such as a dark bar, the butch comes in the form of a female. Short cropped hair and loose wearing clothing, this gay is somewhat noticeable. Usually portrayed as thinking they are of the opposite sex. When they are told they are of one sex, the confusion and frustration that follow appeal to a wide audience because of the drama factor. What we have up next is considered the normal dress and homosexual. These are the people you will least suspect to be gay. They do all the things a heterosexual person of the sex would do. These are the least shown category on TV of the three because it is boring. It's considered boring. It brings no shock value and is what most audiences look for when it comes to homosexuality on TV. The final category is a flamboyant and feminine type. These are the excessively well-dressed fashionistas and that term applies to both male and female. They consistently have high-pitched voices and walk with such eccentricity one would think that they were born with the genitalia of the sex that they imitate. This category is usually placed on a fashion show for their advice and diva-like style. They are also shown for comedic relief because of the over-exaggerations to, si to situations and they are considered to be weak physically. All of these gays are shown to be checking out members of the same sex in sexualized ways and I believe this contributes to the raging homophobia present in our society. Jack, she's just doing her job. I think it's the first time I've used the words Jack and job in the same sentence without needs to get a in between. <laughs> Speaking of which, how goes the employment search? Take me to lunch. <laughs> Have you even decided what it is you want to do? Still not sure, but I do know that I want the font on my resume to be Helvetica. 
I wonder how Chorus Girl will look in Helvetica. In his article, Stereotyping, Richard Dyer discusses the practice of hegemony. According to Dyer, hegemony refers to the attempts of the ruling class to fashion the whole society according to their own world view, value system, sensibility, and ideology by establishing normalcy through social and stereotypes. The ruling group, in their unchallenged power over the rest of society, projects their views onto the inferior groups in such a way that makes their view appear natural. This establishes unquestionable norms that the rest of society is pressured to live up to. Dyer takes the general concept of hegemony and focuses into its application of gay representation on television. He acknowledges that the heterosexual community has placed norms in the gay community that attempt to define them as a group. In turn, these norms delineate how gays should act and in many cases trick gays into actually acting them out. For example, gay relationships on television are mainly portrayed as unequal, just as inequality exists within a heterosexual relationship. There's typically a dominant partner. In a heterosexual relationship, this is usually the male, and in a gay relationship, the older and more successful partner, and a submissive partner. Mirroring heterosexual relationships as close as possible, this image instills the idea that this is how a gay relationship should function and enforces hegemony upon the group. If you want to look at easily the most successful yet stereotypical show of the 2000s that has categorized homosexuals, watch Kawhi for the straight guy. The show follows the Fab Five, as they refer to themselves, who are very ostentatious and obviously effeminate men that attempt to metrosexualize the average straight man. There are five fabulous members, and they all specialize in a specific category. There is Kian for grooming, Ted for food and wine, Jai for culture, Thong for interior design, and Carson, who seems to be the leader and by far the most flamboyant of them all, for fashion. After raiding the homes of some of these straight men and going through some sort of makeover, the men are no longer just dirty average Joes, but fashionable metrosexuals. Metrosexual is a term loosely used to describe a man who cares a lot about his looks, almost to the point where he is at risk of being deemed a homosexual. That is all damaging to the gay community because it places this image of what gay people are to a mass audience. Not all gay people are good dressers or are as outlandish as these five guys are. On the show, there is a lot of physical contact and flirting done by the gay to the straight, but never in, terms, never in serious terms. The straight man seems to be very open to the idea of change. He is surrounded by all these homosexuals and no discomfort is apparent. This is not conducive to the actual representation of reality. In real life, the risk of gay bashing would be very high if this behavior were to occur. Misrepresentation gives false idea to mainstream society that we all embrace gays. Everything is lovey-dovey, which diverts from the actual abuse homosexuals face daily. It perpetuates the stereotype that all gay people will be touchy-touchy and flirtatious to heterosexuals. However, this is obviously not true, but because p people believe that it is so, it places even more of a stigma on the gay community. It is all a downward spiral from there. Overall, the increase of gay representation on television in the United States has had a major influence on the assimilation of gays into society as a whole. The fact that gays are being accepted on television has had a direct effect on the awareness of their existence and acceptance in real life. Queer Eye for the Straight Guy embodies this progress gays have made. The series clearly exemplifies the need for gays to be recognized in society and gives them a specific role to play. However, the role assigned to gays in Queer Eye for the Straight Guy is not always positive for the gay community as it enforces and applies stereotypes. In seeing these stereotypes, gays often feel as though they should be conforming to these images and heterosexuals develop preconceived thoughts of the gay community. However, representation, even with all these stereotypes, is better than no representation at all.